All right, Shabbat Shalom, Yasharala. It's Great Millstone, Louisiana Saints, coming back at you with another live Shabbat lesson. But before we get started, as always, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for leading by example in these last days, and Shalom to the hopeful elect. So we're just going to go into some some recent events. You have the issue with uh, the so-called Haitians, which is the tribe of Levi. They they were on the border being attacked by these Edomites. And who came to their, their refuge, man? The, the tribe of Issachar, man. Let's play this clip right quick. It's, uh, it's some copyrighted music in the background, so we're going to mute it. But it says, God bless them, love to see this. Mexican community, which is the Issacharites, the tribe of Issachar, members have been feeding and aiding Haitian refugees. And this is right after Esau, you know, he went on a on a damn cowboy escapade, you know, rounding up Jake, being a damn demon. But Issachar, they still in the spirit of, of the tribes coming together. And when you read these some of these comments, they're actually saying Levi and Issachar. Th this word is getting out there. Matter of fact, uh, Ryan, if you can give me that in Matthew 24 real quick. This, this gospel has been preached, man. And it's beautiful to see the tribes coming together, even if it's in ignorance. I'm sure the majority of these people don't know that they're the tribe of Levi and the tribe of Issachar, but they know through the spirit that they're the same people and they need to have each other's backs. That's the time we're in right now. We're in the time of, of the tribes realizing that we're the same people, just different flags, different scatterings, and we're coming back together. It's a very heavy power to it. Uh -huh. This is uh, Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Right. And this gospel has been preached to all nations. And that, that really to all nations goes into Israel that's scattered amongst all nations. And right now, uh, the tribe of Levi is scattered everywhere. When you go into the ancient world, the Levites didn't have an inheritance. So here, it, you know, it's spiritual that they're they're constantly their country is constantly being attacked. They're all over Florida. They're all over the United States. But really, all twelve tribes have been scattered, and this gospel has been preached. And, and look what it's doing. It's removing that that wall of partition between the northern and southern kingdom. Jake is realizing we're the same people, and realizing that we have the same devil that's trying to oppress both of us. Matter of fact, you get that uh, that Kaya, that Jeremiah. Come, <clears throat> this Jeremiah chapter fifty, verse thirty-three. It says, "Thus says Yahweh by Shemuel Shavos, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, and all that took them captive held them fast. They refused to let them go." Right, and as we know, the tribe of Judah or the kingdom of Judah is the southern kingdom, which is you so-called Negroes. Uh, West Indians, West Africans, Haitians, so-called Negroes, the Igbo, the, the Ashanti, all the West African tribes. That's the kingdom of Judah. And then you have the kingdom of Israel, which is the northern kingdom, which is so-called Latinos and Native Americans. And we've been split since King Solomon's death. You had uh, his, his predecessors, so like his, uh, his descendants, uh, Rehoboam and also Jeroboam. They, they split the kingdom. And they were, uh, Jeroboam was more wicked, but really both, both the northern and southern kingdom deteriorated into idol worship and degeneracy. And the southern kingdom was taken captive by the Babylonians and the northern kingdom was taken back, uh, captive by the Assyrians. And we, we've been just catching holy hell ever since then, man. That was like over 2,500 years ago. But the prophecy said that we would be oppressed together in the last days. And that's exactly what's happening here on the West, the Western hemisphere. All 12 tribes have been catching hell under this damn devil. And you can see that this is bringing a, a spirit of, you know, some somewhat camaraderie between the tribes. And it's not happening everywhere, but this is just a, you know, a faith booster. You get the uh, the Ezekiel 37. Okay. This is Ezekiel 37, verse 15. The word of Yahweh came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it. For Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions, then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. Okay. And again, Judah represents the southern kingdom, so-called Negroes. Uh, Joseph represents Ephraim, the northern kingdom, so-called Latinos and Native Americans. Keep going. Okay. Verse 17. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. Right. And that's what's happening. 
that the 12 tribes of Israel have become one stick in the hand of the Lord. And that starts with the preaching of this word. That starts with the 12 tribe sign, which a lot of Jakes don't believe in. They're like, well, look, I, I know I'm an Israelite, but I don't know about the 12 tribe sign. Well, it's not for you to know. The book of Ezekiel is really for the prophets. And this is all, everything that's happening on the earth is the spirit of prophecy. And it's the spirit of prophecy that's bringing the tribes together. It's not black power. It's not, you know, a POC, people of color, all of these acronyms and, and FBA and all of this, this man-made madness. The Lord, he gave us names, man. You're the tribe of Judah. You're the tribe of Ephraim. You're the tribe of Issachar. You're the tribe of Gad. We're named by the Heavenly Father. We don't, we don't need any of these flags and acronyms from the so-called white man. That's done nothing but divide us as a people, which we were already divided. It's, it's now time for the 12 tribes, the remnant of the 12 tribes, Salakia, the, the elect among us, to come back together in one accord under the, under the Lord. That's the, that's the true banner that we're supposed to hold up, not the Democratic Party, Black Lives Matter, any of this, this uh, control opposition that this devil came up with. I got you some. I got, I got a precept, too. Yeah, Come. because because it says in Hosea that in the land of the captivity they shall remember themselves. So the prophecy that was spoken before time, all right, is coming to pass, man. All right, and the way that they're remembering themselves is through what the whole the word, all right, the banner of truth, man. That's what it's really about. But this Isaiah eleven and thirteen, well twelve, it says and he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall oh, assemble, huh? Or 11, Come on. This Isaiah 11 and 11. <clears throat> it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to Con. recover the land. Con, the second time. Because the first time we came out of Egypt, it was all 12 tribes. The Lord delivered us as 12 tribes. And he's going to do that again. The water. Keep going. Come. The remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Patros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. We're scattered. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. God, the all, 12, all 12 tribes have been scattered. You have Jake's that that read that scripture and say, look, only Judah was scattered. Israel was in Africa. That's that's madness, man. The Northern Kingdom is also scattered. The, this, the transatlantic slave trade started with Esau bringing so-called Indians and Native Americans back over to the old world. They were scattered first. Even right now, when you go in Southeast Asia, you have a lot of Issacharites. You have a lot of so-called Latinos that are, that are over in the land of Japheth. Like Manny Pacquiao, for example. We, through the spirit, he's clearly an Israelite. All right, he believes in the scriptures. He's super athletic. He, he's against, you know, this, this madness, this heathen madness. That's just one example, man. There's all sorts of so-called uh, uh, Southeast Asians and just people that are, you would think, okay, that's a heathen. That's really an Israelite, man. But that's only perceived through the spirit. You got it out. Keep going. Right. If we wasn't, if we wasn't scattered, then how would we be gathered at the end time? That means prophecy wouldn't be able to fulfill itself, God. which would make the Lord a liar. Which we know he can't lie according to numbers, man. Like we, it had to be a falling away in order to be what, <laughs> uh, return, uh, brought back a second time. Yeah. We had to fall away, man. All right, prophecy had to fulfill itself. It speaks about the scriptures. The scriptures can't be broken, so that must needs be fulfilled. This prophecy, man. All right, along with the other prophecies as well. It says the envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of judah shall be cut off ephraim shall not envy judah and judah shall not vex ephraim that's beautiful and we're watching live footage of this right here this is ephraim not vexing judah and judah i mean ephraim not envying judah and judah not vexing ephraim man levi the so-called haitians they're from the southern kingdom they that would be considered judah and you have ishakar which is from the northern kingdom they would be considered ephraim and you can see they just having a cookout, man. This is just some some uh, uh, Jake Jake favorite pastime, man. Putting some on the grill, you know. Yeah. You would think nothing nothing is going on here. But like the, the kids, you know, they have no idea. Oh, this is a crisis. This is a panic. They just they just enjoying camaraderie, man. Jake just want to eat, have a good time, and avoid uh, you know nigger moments, man. 
being a simple man dwelling in tents, a plain yeah. man dwelling in tents. Yeah. Eve, I can see. But that's not the ultimate coming together, man. God. As a greater coming together, you're saying a prelude of us coming together, man, just being awakened by the word. All right. But there's a prelude. I got one too. That's a that's a prelude. Oh, go ahead. You got it. No, go ahead. Finish your point. I'm just, I'm just making a note that I got a, I got like, a come, What you're saying is a prelude to the kingdom of heaven, man. All right. The Lord say, look, I'm going to gather, I'm going to gather my, 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 my elect, my remnant. All right. Which going to head or they're going to, uh, they're going to be the, the ones that usher in the kingdom of heaven. And, and they have been gathered. You're seeing them. All right. In Isaiah 30 and 20 it says, uh, that, uh, Thy teacher shall not be re be removed in the corner anymore. Thine eyes shall see thy teachers. So you're starting with the first stones of the kingdom of heaven, man. You're looking at them. Contrary to popular belief. You got it, huh? Yeah, this is Jeremiah uh, 3 and 18. It says, in those days, the house of Judah shall, all right, shall walk with the house of Israel. And they shall come together out of the land of the north. To the land that I have given for inheritance unto their fathers. That's a cold cut. That's a cold cut. Anybody saying the northern kingdom is in Africa clearly tells you all 12 tribes are going to come out of the land of the north, which is Babylon the Great, which is where we are right now, man. That's plain. So, you know, these pro-black jakes, all 12 tribes are Negro. That, that's a false doctrine. That's not biblical. The Lord never said he was coming back for black people. The Lord never said he was coming back to gather Negroes. He's coming back to gather the remnant, the elect of the 12 tribes of Israel. And, you know, brothers say this all the time. You may have a so-called Negro that's actually Northern Kingdom. You don't know who, you don't have your, your lineage going back to the 12 patriarchs of Jacob. You could be an Ephraimite. You're talking about Ephraims in Africa and you were whole Ephraimite the whole time. You, you, don't, you don't know your actual, your whole lineage going back to your forefathers, man. We all receive this through faith and the spirit. And Jake, Jake is kicking up against the pricks. He's resisting the Holy Spirit. You had one, Ryan? Yeah, I had a precept. And I'm also going to say, you may have, a, like you said, an Ephraimite, even a whole Issacharite that looks like Judah. But at the same time, you, you BOI Israelites out there, black only, you may be a whole tear. You may be a whole Edomite looking like Judah. That's why you <laughs> can't receive it. Yeah. Or a Hamite. A Hamite. Yeah, Hopefully, a lot of these niggas live Hamites, man. Yeah. Like they're Hamite. Uh, one polo pocket wearing nigga from Saturday. That nigga was a hemite with, with that one big ass tooth missing in his mouth, man. You know? <laughs> yeah, that guy was a nigga, though. <laughs> nigga like a black sponge box sweatpants on a Saturday, man. That nigga. Go ahead, Doc. <laughs> this is Amos chapter 9, verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And will raise up his ruins and i will build it as in the days of old john now in the days of old who was the tabernacle of david it was all 12 tribes man so if the lord's raising up the tabernacle of david as in the days of old that means it's going to be the 12 tribes again all right king david brought the tribes together and then king solomon reigned for 40 years in peace and prosperity in the kingdom of heaven it's going to be 144,000 King Solomon's. That's why Yahushua said one greater than Solomon is here. Yahushua is going to be perfect in the kingdom. He's never going to go off. And the, his joint heirs are also going to be perfect. And that's what 12,000 men out of each tribe. It's not 12,000 black people. It's 12,000 from the tribe of Judah, Levi, Benjamin, Ephraim, Gad, Simeon, all the way on down to Issachar. That's what the kingdom of heaven is. And if you, if you don't want to take part in that, then that just means you're not one of those, you're not part of that number. I'll uh, read that again, Baba Gusha, because this is it, a key point. Uh, just read it again, Baba Gusha. It's going to kind of say. Con, con. This is Amos chapter 9, verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the days of old. Right, and closing up the breaches goes into just all of these false doctrines, all of these fake identities that our people are, are caught up in. Uh, Kayap, you give me um, Isaiah 25 and 7. Closing up the breaches goes into all of the things that, that took us away from our first love, which is the truth. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. And that goes into us tearing down strongholds, 
uh, destroying these imaginations, actually going out to the highways and hedges where we could be seen by the people. We could be made a spectacle unto the nations. That's what, what wakes Jake up, especially when you see camps that have all the different tribes or at least brothers that appear to be from different tribes. People see that they've never seen that before in their life. So-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans, young men in their prime, standing up to this devil, standing up to the government, standing up to these wicked, demonic religious institutions that have our people's minds going astray. That's, a, that's something just with, watching the prophets, wa watching the prophets is part of prophecy. And that's what's what's closing up the breaches. You got the, uh, the Isaiah? Come. Come, on, come. On. This is Isaiah 25 and 7. It says that he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. Right, the veil spread over all nations. All right, going, to, going back into Job 9 and 24. All right, as soon as the earth was given into the hand of the wicked, he did what? He covered the faces of the judges, but that veil is being removed. You, when you look at these comments, they're, they're talking about how beautiful it is to see, you know, so-called Mexicans, so-called Levi, so-called uh, Haitians coming back together. But one of them was like, look, this is Levi and Issachar. There's, there's a lot of Jakes that know the truth. And even in, you know, you, you might come across somebody, they, they look like they don't know anything, but, you know, they, they came across the word and they believe. They may not be a teacher. They may not be, they might not even be a, a, a member of the elect. You know, a lot of two thirds know who they are. This is all, this is all to fulfill the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. It's all a part of prophecy. Yeah, man, this is beautiful, man. Jake just having a cookout. But in the kingdom of heaven, like the brother said earlier, the real, the real coming together is the, the marriage of the lamb, the elect being brought together. This is just a, I guess you could say like a carnal representation of what's about to happen on a spiritual level. The 144,000 are going to come down New Jerusalem, and that's going to be the greatest family reunion in the history of the earth. It's going to be, just imagine all 12 tribes, just thousands of us just celebrating it and glorifying and singing the new song. We came out of Egypt. We were singing, uh, what was that, Exodus 15. We were singing the song of Moses. We're going to sing that again, but it's going to be, it's going to be remixed. It tells you in, what is that, Jeremiah 16, where uh, when we get delivered the second time, uh, if a brother can get that, I think it's 16. Uh, I know what's that. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be even more glorious than the first deliverance. We're we're coming into the time, time of the second exodus. All right. So what happened in the first exodus? Egypt was completely destroyed. Our enemies were put to shame. And the name Yahweh was magnified amongst the heathen. This time, Yahweh Shai is going to get his glory. You got it, Art. Hey, if if I could also add, also going into that, uh, Pharaoh refused to let the children of Israel go, just like right now. So see, we not out of, we not totally out of our enemy's hand. Even though they having a cookout, they are gonna have to go get a job somewhere, yeah. right? They are gonna have to continue slaving. So that's how you know we're not completely out of the hands of our enemies, and we have to be saved according to Deuteronomy, uh, what twenty eight and sixty. See, we we have to be redeemed, all right, bought back, man, all right. So we still, they still in captivity. Even though they eat some chicken, man. This ain't the end all be all. You gotta do it. Oh yeah, we're yet this day in our captivity. You gotta ride. Yeah. Just to back up what Kaya said, a real quick one. This is Jeremiah 8, verse 20. The harvest is past, the summer yep. is ended. And didn't we just get out of summer? <laughs> and we are not saved. And we are not saved. Beautiful, not saved. brother. Yes, sir. <laughs> Heavy. Yeah, we ain't saved. So uh -huh. Even though they have in a moment where they can enjoy, I guess what you call life, because really you never enjoy life being a slave. Life is never enjoyable to you, all right? Because any pockets of fun you have, all right, all you're going to recollect back on is, man, we got to go to work tomorrow. Man, this got to end, all right? You're not, uh, you're not experiencing the kingdom of heaven to when you never have to work again. You never have to think about a bill. You never have to think about tears. You never have to think about uh, any way to get anything done, man. So that's, you know, that's the ultimate goal. This okay to think about, but us on this phone and men in like us on this screen and men in like mine, we have bigger thoughts. We have greater thoughts. All right. Our thoughts have escalated to a level to where we don't know how high our thoughts done went, man. All right. That's what it is. The kingdom of heaven. You got it, bro. God, I got I got one too to go into with you and um 
uh, I'm a while we're talking about uh, going back into Amos. It's Amos 9 11, and I'm going to read down to the end real fast. And it says, uh, And in that, day, in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David, which is fallen, and close up the breaches thereof, and I will <laughs> raise up the ruins, and I will build it as the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathens, which is called by my name, said the Lord that doeth this. All right. And it says, uh, Behold, the day shall come, said the Lord, that I will that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. All right. And the treader of the grapes, that in the treader of grapes, him that sow a seed. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink of the wine thereof. And they shall also make gardens and eat of them. Because what you're seeing right here is, is a reversal of the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Because in Deuteronomy 28, the Lord said we was going to build and another man was going to inhabit it. We was going to do the certain things and another man was going to uh, reap of those things, man. Now it's going to come a time to where the things that we have planted, the buildings and the bricks of of uh, buildings and palaces and cities, we're going to reap from our, what we uh, put put our hands to, all right? And this is the end. It says, and I will plant them into their land and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which i have given them said the lord of the lord uh the lord thy power all right yeah. and that's the true rest the true rest is not you having two jobs or you working overtime having enough to get a nicer car or... no man the true rest is the plowman overtaking the reason man a pension plan I, that's the true rest I... a 401k 401k ra a rough a rough ra and shit man yeah a cd account a c yeah a cd account and shit uh don't don't forget about crypto Ock. that's gonna save us now the the, the bitcoin yeah, crypto <laughs> niggas just they crazy, was pulled man. out of their land right the haitians whatever what what when coming right here they came from the, across the border right <clears throat> yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i'm gonna say something about that weird ass shit too I've been trying to fix my mind to understand how the hell the land of Haiti is way down here on the island. How the fuck they go through Mexico, all the way through Mexico to end up at the border of the border of uh, Mexico and, and Texas, man. Without I'm talking about ten to fourteen thousand people migrating on boats through Mexico all the way up there, and nobody find out nothing until they just show up one day under a goddamn bridge, man. You do the math of that. You tell me this this is the most this this man is the most nosiest snoopiest motherfucker there is man he want to know everything you tell me he ain't know these people were traveling and migrating to one place at one time man that's bullshit they were, yep. it, it was a reason why they, they was bought that man yeah all of the stuff you is know, it, it doesn't make any sense it's, it's like it's like a mob of cars it's like a mob of cars traveling from the east coast all the way to the west coast at high rates of speed, you tell me this man ain't gonna know what's going on, man. He got cameras, he got surveillance, big big brother, you know, all the alphabet boys. Come on, man, don't make no sense. But go ahead, I want to make yeah. this camera right. He's just a devil, man. At the end of the day, we only see glimpses of, of so-called conspiracy theories, which they're not theories, they're conspiracy facts. He's the devil that the Bible speaks of. He's been exposed. All right, going into Thessalonians, when, when that man of sin is revealed, that's that coincides with the word going out that coincides with the elect being sealed all of these end time prophecies that coincides with the 12 tribes coming together we're in the last days man and this is all you're going to see uh the men of faith our faith is going to get stronger and stronger and you're going to see this world get pulled apart more and more it's just the beginning you uh you were holding one ryan i got that uh jeremiah 16 you wanted kind kind let me get this first this is brother kabar on the comment board uh, Shabbat Shalom. I, Shabbat this is uh, Baruch 4 and 37. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away. They come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, 
rejoicing in the glory of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And that's what's going on. We're being gathered by the word. Even these jakes that don't that aren't in the truth, they're still being gathered by the word. Because this is prophecy. Everything that's transpiring is a result of prophecy. So the 12 tribes of Israel are being gathered by the word. And in the kingdom, we're going to rejoice again like the world's never seen. But you got it, Art. Okay. This is Jeremiah 16 and verse 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that it shall no more be said, Yahweh liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but Yahweh liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them and will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. Right. It says from the land of the north and from all the lands whether they've been driven. All right. The land of the north, again, is Babylon the Great. But also, as the brother read in Isaiah 11, we've been scattered amongst all the nations. So whether it's the islands, whether it's a so-called country, city, state, Anywhere there's Israelites, if the elect is among them, they're going to be gathered. And we're going to be gathered in style, man. Not not this right here. We're not going to be grilling on. Uh... <laughs> we're going to be in chariots, man. We're going to be delivered. We're going to be grilling on the back of a, 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 a old goddamn car, man. That's yeah. turned into a barbecue grill. Yeah, man. <laughs> but that's Jake, man. Jake, Jake will turn anything into a barbecue. That's, that's how you know. They the tribes, but that's a, uh, you know, like I said, it's a carnal like precursor to what's about to happen in the spirit. We're gonna be gathered in those chariots. And we're gonna look down and see the destruction of our enemies, and that's that's really what we look forward to because these jakes, the majority of them, you know, even the jakes on the comment board, they're like, you know, we we gotta come together, people of color, come together. If you were to go up to them and say, you know what, we do need to come together and we need to enslave these so-called white people, they they would be like, whoa, 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 that's too much. That's Hey, hey, <laughs> they don't want to come together and rule. They want to come together and cook. And that's about it. They just they just want to have a good time, barbecue, and then go back to work Monday. We want to come together with all authority and dominion and reign over these heathen that have had us in, in derision for years. Crack skulls. I'm going to say this, too. I got your precept, bro. Live, yeah, living over there for a while in California and shit, this, this couldn't happen going back 10, 15 years ago, you know, with Isakar doing anything for any... Any of the any of the the, uh, the Southern Kingdom, man, you know them. They just said, "Quick, man, fuck them fuckers, man, fuck them." You know they, you know they left Jake out there destitute. But now you seeing, the, which is the Lord made him do that. These 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 Ezekiel rights right here is in the truck. The Lord made him uh, have a heart for uh, Levi, man. You know, and you and like I said, like the brother, said, this is this is nothing more than a precursor. So what's to come? The Lord is making Jake have that tender heart for each other again, man, through the spirit, you know? And it's only a matter of time to the Lord also turn turn that focus and that 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 actual uh that pure hatred to you 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 nations that's doing it to us. Ultimately, you uh you Edomites, man. The Lord gonna make two thirds, all right of our nation man turn against you and, and actually seek your life man all right and you nation you mobites you funk ass mobites because you you do shit too all right you right there with Edom, man you do your dirt you do your dirt to you arabs and you fucking africans man that's why the lord gonna put all you devils uh down in slavery under us man all right and we can't wait man God. go ahead I God. you see here it says tribe of issachar and tribe of levi there's some random Jake. This is black and brown need to stick together, which we're all brown. All right, there's no such thing as a black person, but you know, just the sentiment of this when you read the comments. Basically, we stick together stronger than glue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That one underneath is talking shit about Esau. Yeah. The one at the bottom. Yeah. Isn't the Mexican are those nasty things Trump said about him? And now look who's the ones helping the Haitians and not on horses with whips. Who's nasty? Yeah, he's nasty, man. He saw as a dirt bag. And most of our people know that. They just want to get along and go along to get along. This is the brother uh, Wa'aja. He says, Proverbs 11 and 21, though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. And who's the seed of the righteous? You're looking at them. All right, the southern and northern kingdom, the 12 tribes of Israel, that's the seed of the righteous. 
You got it, Doc. There you go. Until yeah, but until, until righteousness rained down, we could be the seed, Doc. We gotta we can, we gotta be in the kingdom of righteousness, man. Yeah. All right. We ain't to where we gotta be where we ain't cooking, man. All right. <laughs> we ain't working. Cooking is working, man. All right. <laughs> you gotta hey, you gotta pray for that. But this is Isaiah sixty two and one. I'm gonna read the four. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burn it. Yeah. Keep going. And the Gentiles, see, <laughs> shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of Yahweh shall name. Thou also shall be a crown of glory in the hand of Yahweh, and a royal dim them dear them in the hand of our power. This is the point. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. Because they could cook chicken, right? Huh? But they still forsaken, huh? You cook chicken and hang together and be cool and drink beer, but you still in you still in the hands of your enemy. It says, Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called have Ziba, which means his delight is in her. I think that's the, the, the mother of the queen of Hezekiah or something like that. And thy land, Belula, I mean, Beula. For Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. But that was it. Yeah, we're going to be brought back to the land. That's a key part of prophecy, which yeah. these gutter rats don't like to talk about. These Christians don't I like to talk about that. Yeah, no, nobody wants I to got. deal with the, the final prophecy of the gathering of Israel is that all 12 tribes are going to be returned to the land by the Messiah. Okay, once you understand that that's part of the gospel, a huge part of the gospel, that does away with every so-called Abrahamic religion, Judaism, Christianity, Islam. It does away with all of these fake people claiming to be us. All right? The final prophecy is the Messiah gathering the 12 tribes of Israel and bringing us back to our land that he promised our forefather Abraham. You got it, right? Hey, uh, Raya, get on Hebrews 11 and 12 and read down to 16. Uh, hey, if I could also add that word Belula, it says that the Lord delighted in thee and thy land shall be married, meaning what the Lord put together, put together, let no man bring asunder. So the second time when we go into the land, when the Lord marries us, we're never going to be divorced or cast out anymore, man. All yeah, right? the one it's I read. It's going to be to do us part. You got it? That's the one I read. Remember, say we not we would not be pulled out of pulled the land anymore. Anymore. Yeah, that's the spirit. Huh? Yep. That's why I say that the land shall be married. And what? The people is a people before what? The land or the place. So we're going to be married to our power again, man. You got it, bro. All right. They got it. This is a heavy one right here, too, that uh, Raya about to get. This is Hebrews 11, verse 12. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. But they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is and heavenly. Wherefore, the Most High is not ashamed to be called their power, for he hath prepared for them a city. <laughs> That's goosebumps right there, man. Ooh. That's beautiful. Even going back Damn. to that uh, Ezekiel 37, man. He's going to return us to the land promised I'm to our up. fathers. And we're going to be, oh, you got that too? Khan, I was, I was going to ask if you wanted to keep going in Ezekiel 37. Khan, Khan let's go back to it. Beautiful. Khan. I'll start at verse 19. Say unto them, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, 
and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. Verse 21. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen. Not the Balfour Declaration or uh, the 1948 UN charters, anything like that. I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither that shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore mm -hmm. at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says that there shall be one king. When you go into the, the illegal state of Israel, they have prime ministers. They have a democracy. Their laws come from a mix of uh, Roman law and Sharia law. It has nothing to do with the Torah. They, those people, they, they don't fit the prophecies at all whatsoever. Prophecy clearly tells you that the Lord is going to gather all 12 tribes and put us in our land. And one king is going to reign over us. And that's Yahushai. And also King David is going to sit on the throne. We're all going to sit. We're going to be a nation of kings and priests. That's another yeah. thing. We're... we're where, where do you see so-called Jewish people claiming to be a nation of kings and priests? They're a nation. Yeah, they only of, say they want tribe. They only yeah. say they want tribe. Jews. Yeah. There, Everybody can't be Judah. So-called Jewish people. <laughs> there's no such thing as Jewish people in the scriptures. Yeah. That's not in the Bible. There's no way in the Bible. Hey, I, and besides them having a parliament and a democracy and prime ministers, you've got you've got a uh, Amalek worshiping that that the Talmud, you've got Ishmael over there worshiping that taxi driver Muhammad, and then you got Christianity over there. Yeah, those are all idols. That's a, a confederate of weirdo idol worship, man. It has nothing to do with the scriptures. Clearly, can you get a kayak? Can you give me Isaiah 2? Come on, hey, the top? Hmm? another strike on them, too, that the Lord declared declare, uh, a bastard that, that dwell in Asdai. But we have never been a bastard child. Our father chastised us. We still getting chastised right now. That means we have a father, man. <laughs> hey, uh, Raya, get on um, uh, Hosea 1 and uh, 10. Now go up. That Isaiah two. Go up to 9 and nine. read down to 11. Okay. This is Hosea chapter 1 verse 9 then said the most high call his name lo ami for ye are not my people and i will not be your power verse 10 yet the number of the children of israel shall be as the sand of the sea which cannot be measured nor numbered and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them ye are not my people there it shall be said unto them ye are the sons of the living power then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. <laughs> okay. You got them, what? <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. That's the time we're in. It says, in the place where it was said that we're not his people. Where is that? The land of the north, Babylon the great. And there is going to be said, we're the sons of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which we are. It tells you in Wisdom of Solomon uh, that the wicked, they say in their mind, okay, these people are clean contrary to us. They say they're the sons of the Most High. We do say that. Our ways are, are, are the ways of the ancient, the ways of the Most High, the ways of, of righteousness. Their ways are the ways of the heathen, man. I was going to say, this, this is the only place because when you go yeah. from the Babylonian captivity on down, we always knew that we were Israel, man. You know, really, here it was the only place that was beaten out of us, man. All right, it was it was grinded, beaten, and twisted out of us that we were black African Americans, Tantos, Indians, all these bywords and, and proverbs, man. All right, but and it, 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 it was the only place, all right, that our power was beaten into beaten out of us and told that he was a whole different other person, man, and it was believed, man. Uh, and to this very day, to now is, it's been 
it's been brought to us through the through the how about you through the through the, the elders that who our power is now man our true power is and we remember them man all right you got it out hmm. you gonna say something ryan i was gonna say and that that further cuts those 1948ers because they how people have always referred to them as, as the people of the book they even have a joke when uh when people are talking about talking about how there's never peace between the israelis and the palestinians they'll say something like oh they've been doing that for thousands of years referring to those uh 1948ers but not the true children of israel we're the only nation that fits this precept right here yeah so-called jewish people have never not known who they are they'll throw that in your face when you tell them that they're not the people they'll talk about how they have their records how they they've always known well according to prophecy we, we discontinue from our heritage. That's in Jeremiah. So we clearly, I mean, we, we could go on all day, but uh, if a brother can get um, Romans 11. You have more on that Ezekiel 37, Ock? Let me see. I had Isaiah 2 for you, too, you told me to get. Come on, come on. I think that's what you said, right? Come on, you can bring that out. Yeah. Come on, this is Isaiah 2. Yeah. You can. Go ahead. Con. This is Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2, right? Uh, yeah, start at the top. Right. It says, The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh Bashimawasha house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. Right, and as brothers know, mountains represent governments, hills represent smaller governments. All right, to Zion, which is a monument to the Most High, the, the mountain of Zion is going to reign and be on top of all other governments. It tells you the same thing in Daniel, man. We're going to rule over the other governments, and they're going to flow onto us. Keep going. It says that many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of our power of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Right. Out of Zion shall go forth the law. All right. Not a parliament, not democracy. All right. The nation. Kosher of pork. Yeah. Kosher pork. All right. Uh, Tel Aviv, gay pride, all of this madness. It tells you when the 12 tribes. Are returned back into our land and we're married back into the land of israel the nations are going to flow into us and the law is going to go forth out of zion we're going to teach the law statutes and commandments of yahweh bashem yahweh shai in total perfection and righteousness we're going to be again a nation of kings and priests we're going to be the mediators between the heathen and the most high they're going to have to sacrifice to us they're going to have to offer uh oblation and, and different uh you know spices herbs minerals their daughters everything you name it all of the resources are going to come we're going to suck the milk of the gentiles man that's going to happen that's a major part of prophecy and these devils they're in our homeland but they're not issuing forth the law there's no righteousness coming out of the illegal state of israel it's nothing but profanity pornography plastic styrofoam madness gender confusion they're just total degeneracy man Th those are a bunch of devils keep going out it says it's locking. and and he shall judge among the nations this vote and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks nations shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war anymore now wait a minute when the true 12 tribes of israel are gathered together and return to their land there's not going to be any war on the earth anymore so right now we're in a time of as soon as those devils got back in the land, they, they got airstrike, they got bombed. There, there's perpetual war going on in the earth because the true people are not in rulership. All right, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear the rule, the people mourn. People are in a state of mourning right now because the wrong people are in the land and they're they're uh, issuing forth madness. But this is this is a prelude to righteousness, man. The, the true people coming back together. And what are they doing? They just having a good time, eating fellowshipping all right a good life hey the, the brothers in london they, they made this statement a while back they said 
a good life is not complicated that's why when you read the blessings it's deuteronomy 28 verse 1 to 14 it's really short you know you're blessed having great children having abundance is very simple but the curses are complicated a cursed life is a complicated life that's why verse 15 to verse 68 is just is huge man in the kingdom that's all going to be reversed you heathen are going to have a, a rough time doing everything and everything's going to come easy to us we're just going to be kicking back judging the people in righteousness and enjoying the earth enjoying our creation the earth was made for israel we're going to enjoy all of the all of the lawful foods we're going to have an abundance of children that's what we have to look forward to. These people have have uh, slavery to look forward to. But uh, you have, you have more than Ezekiel thirty seven. I think that was pretty much it. Fine, give me uh, Romans eleven. Start at the top, because this is yeah. th this is just a it's a beautiful thing to see that all of the work that this devil spent centuries doing was for nothing. He spent millions of dollars to try to keep us apart, to not let us know who we are. And prophecy is undoing all of his work. His his enterprise is not going to reach fruition. Israel knows who we are. We know who our power is. And he's he's finished. He can't do anything with us knowing who we are and serving our power. If Yahweh Bashem and Yahweh Shah be for us, who could be against us? That's oh, the I want to back that up. God. What you just said? Yeah. If Yahweh Bashem and Yahweh Shah be for us, who could be against us? No, before that. Before that. Oh, if we're right with our power, there's nothing these heathen can do. And they right. know that. Was that in uh, Judith you're getting? Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Con, con. Because Jake and the world, they they know that there's, they'll, they'll say things like the powers that be. Some of them will say Illuminati. Some of them will say the man or the white man. They know that this devil is trying to pull us apart and plot on us, but they don't know why. We know the why because the scriptures tell us. The elders about to read it. You got it, right? This is Judah in the Apocrypha, chapter 5, verse 17. All right. And it says, And and whence they sin, not before their their power or the most high. All Yahweh, how you know, I'm gonna read again. When they sin not before uh Yahweh, they prospered. Because the most high that hated iniquity was with them. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles, very sore, and were led captives into and, and left captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their power was cast to the ground, and their cities were taken by their enemies. God, and that's that's the thought of the heathen. That's why in the Book of Revelation it refers to Esau as the accuser of his brethren. Because he knows as long as he can keep us separated from the Most High, he can have his way with us. And a lot of our people in the ancient days, Jeremiah tried to warn them, Isaiah tried to warn them, like, look, if you don't serve the Lord, you're going to be destroyed. It doesn't matter how strong your military is. You know, Jake has always been the most athletic, the most creative, the most intelligent. And our people thought that that's what made us great. No, none of those things mean anything if the Lord isn't with us. You could have the best soldiers in the world. You could have the, the most melanin, all of this madness. None of it matters if the Lord is against you. It tells you in Deuteronomy, you know, how can one uh, put 10,000 to flight except his his uh, his rock sold him out, uh, roughly paraphrasing. So you can have the strongest military, but if the Lord doesn't want you to win the war, you're not going to win it. Fearing the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, period. There's no, there's no other uh, solution for our people. All of these carnal, you know, organizations and political ideologies, none of that is going to help our people. Serving the Lord in fear and trembling is the only thing that that's ever mattered and a lot of our people are waking up to that you got the uh the romans 11. okay okay this is romans chapter 11 verse 1. i say then hath the most high cast away his people god forbid for i also am an israelite of the seed of abraham of the tribe of benjamin the most high hath not cast away his people which he foreknew what ye not what ye not what the scripture saith for of, of elias how he maketh intercession to the most high against israel saying lord they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars and i am left alone and they seek my life verse 4 but what saith the answer of the most high unto him 
I have reserved to meet myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Okay. That, that 7,000 represents completion. But I read verse 1 again, because this is the, the key point right here, is that because a lot of people think that the Lord cast us away, the Lord did away with Israel, the Lord, like, no, man. It tells you in Malachi 3 and 6 that he changes not, therefore the sons of Jacob are not consumed. Read verse 1 again, Bible Bajan. Okay. If I could say real quick, I think in Jeremiah 36, it says, if you can do away the suns and the moon and the stars, then will I put away the nation of Israel. Okay. This is Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, hath the Most High cast away his people? Power forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Come on. God forbid. The Most High forbid. He has not cast away his people. And that whole chapter goes into how we're being gathered. You have people that will read Romans 11 and say it's talking about different nations being grafted in the olive tree. That, that's madness, man. The broken wild olive branches were scattered Israelites. We're looking at some wild branches in this picture. All right, if you're barbecuing on a, on a hood of a Chevy engine or whatever this is, man, it, it's a wild branch right here. But guess what? The Lord still loves him, and he's going to be in the kingdom. He's going to have a whole fleet of heathen cooking for him. Oh, listen, all you heathen that are going to work for Issachar in the kingdom, you, <laughs> hey, man, like the, the, the one of the most uh, difficult bosses to work for is a hard worker. Somebody that, that works hard themselves and they become boss, you can't you can't slack with somebody like that, man. So all of you heathen that work for Issachar in the kingdom, y'all are gonna get get double time, man. I got you something for that that Romans eleven and one too. Okay, you got it up. There's Isaiah fifty and one. It says, Thus say Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, where's the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away? Question mark. Uh, which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Question mark. Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. Yeah, for your transgressions. We suffer because of our sins. We're in this position because we transgressed against the Most High. He didn't turn up his back on us. We turned our back on him. And so once we seek his face, it's a wrap, like the elder brought out in Judah. Man, once we're okay with our power, that there's nothing they could do. Let me get this uh, off the comment board. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 2. And I'll start at 30. It says, For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. Now, who, who are the only people that this applies to on earth? Again, who lost their heritage and had to be called the sons of the Most High in the land of their captivity? That's only applying to us, man. It says, and shall know that I am Yahweh, their power, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. Uh-oh, R-U-I-C. It says we're going to have the name in the land of our captivity, not in the kingdom. So how are you going to call on the Lord to save you if you don't know his name? That's, but that's a whole other topic. It says, and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sinned before Yahweh, and I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it, and I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their power, and they shall be my people, and I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. So once we go back, that's a wrap, man. We're never going to go into captivity again because we're never going to sin again. We're going to have the new covenant. We're going to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments perfectly. And these heathen are going to be in slavery forever, man. They're going to be cooking at the at the cookout. And like the brother said, you know, a lot of you Edomites are going to be barbecued. You're going to be on the grill screaming man, for life. Hey, man, I don't want them touching shit. <laughs> no, not, not working at the grill. On the grill. Like, literally on the, on the grill, grill getting barbecued. <laughs> <laughs> They're not touching our food through the spirit. No Edomites are going to Hell be. Hell no. Especially Edom. And Kinda. that grill, that grill's going to be in Tophet and Gehenna. Yeah. Hey, and what you're saying right there, another thing, <laughs> that's a prelude of our people in that same chapter that you just read. I believe it's like 20, either 26 or 28. It says, that delicate ones have gone rough ways. Kinda. Now, and that's, that's a rough way right there, man. Crossing the border, getting whipped. I, I believe uh, brothers was posting like pictures and articles 
you know, just pictures showing E on horses whipping them, man. Which is that's symbolic to the uh uh servants on horses and, and princes walking the earth, man. Yeah, brother All posted right. that. Huh? Yeah, the brother posted that. I'll read it real right. quick and back you up. This is Ecclesiastes 10, verse 6. Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in a low place. Yeah, that's the rich. That's you looking at the poor, do yet the poor in in, in eyes. It, it, I mean, you know, according to the eyes, they rich in spirit because all of Israel going to be saved when it's all said and done. All right. What is right here? Right. Not like it's not right now, but in the kingdom of heaven. But ultimately, they have gone rough ways. The rich sitting in low place. That's a rough way. That's a rough travel, man. All yeah. right. It says the curse is still on us, man. Yeah. It's lucky. You got it. You got it, bro. Oh, yeah. Verse seven. I've seen servants upon horses. And princes walking as servants upon the earth. Yeah, because the curse is still cleaving to us. So we still in a rough way. But it's a time where, like you said, man, where we're going to put on robes of righteousness, man. We're going to have on double robes of righteousness, man. The double right? garment. And that's what we long for. God, that double garment of righteousness, man. I mean, yeah. you got so much righteousness, you could take one off. You still got another one yeah, on, you man. you got another one on, man. A backup, <laughs> <laughs> ain't no battery packs in the kingdom man yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be all spiritual yeah. it's gonna be physical too but you know i'm talking about far as rice is go it's gonna be spiritually and better than us. you got yeah. it Doc. yeah it's gonna be a beautiful <laughs> sight to behold man yeah you know? and it's like like i said this is just a faith booster through the spirit man just seeing the tribes come back together and also you know seeing the people in the comments talking about how we need to come <laughs> together and get on these devils you know <laughs> Good one, good one. I gotta bring that out with the brother C right here on the chat. He said, uh, <laughs> and a double whip, a double whip of mercilessness for you, Esau. Okay. <laughs> a double whip of mercy, merciless, mercilessness. I mean, it's like hey, hey, the scriptures, mercy. the scriptures say doing to them double. So he had yeah. one whip, we're gonna have to have a double whip. We just, yeah, <laughs> Jake crossing yeah. him up like nunchucks, man. <laughs> hey, well, what's gonna be crazy too? It's like a person that you uh, that's been lied to for so long. When they finally, when the gig is up, when they finally wake up to your lies, man, they, Israel gonna beat the shit out you, Esau. Ima imagine all all these greats, which a lot of them know now, but a lot of these so-called great celebrities like the Mike Tyson of the world. Wait till that guy get in his right mind and get unleashed on you, man. It's not gonna be good. All right. The Michael Jacksons of the world, <laughs> the common everyday Israelite wakes up to your bullshit in the kingdom of heaven. That's why, that's why the Lord said we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna break you like a, a potter's vessel, man. We're gonna really do you in, especially you know, we're gonna third. really do you in, man. <clears throat> slavery gonna look like a uh, the slavery you gave us is gonna look like. Some shit on some shit on the Teletubbies, man. Compared to what we gonna give your ass. Sure. What the brother said, double whips, double lynchings, double uh, huh, double all the things you've done us, man. And righteousness, we gonna do it in a righteous way, man. All right. Hey, yeah. Right. And we can't wait. And you and you know it, man. And one thing about one thing about a uh, <clears throat> an asshole like yourself, man. You know, mo most of you devils know judgment coming to your red asses, man. That's why you that's why you walk on eggshells. That's why you the the uh, Jake moves too fast in the restaurant. You you jumping thinking something's gonna happen to you, man. You hear a loud pop from a, a car backfire, a tire blow, you think somebody ain't got on your ass, man. All right. That's why you devils, you devils hey man, you got it coming. You got it coming, man. And it's yeah. like in these C D Jake's here. On this video, what did it be from um <clears throat> is it called what did it be from uh Levi? You know, in the kingdom of heaven, they gonna get you, man. These same ones as these these little children, these these women, these men, they gonna they gonna tell they're gonna tell you another asshole, man, as they say. You know. They ain't gonna be nice with you in the kingdom of heaven, man. You got it out. <clears throat> I could say I meditate in tears. I was thinking 
having a roller coaster in the kingdom, but Esau is going to be the track that the roller coaster, Edomites tied together, going to be the track that the roller coaster is going to ride over. Hey, Samson back, huh? Samson is back now. God. He back, brother. Like, yeah. he's back now. He's in his lot. <laughs> the Lord going to unleash that strength on Samson, man. This man, come on, man. Huh? God. Yeah, man, it's going to be like the, he gotta uh, deal the with second this sequel shit. to Jason. When Jason was on top of that roof fighting that boxer, that nigga was, you know, punching on Jason, and Jason hit the nigga one time and knocked his head off, man. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. Jason. Really, really, you really, what, what's being done right now through the whole nation of Israel, starting with the prophets and teachers and the elect, man. You really like that that statement they say, "Waking up a sleeping giant." You really didn't woke a sleeping giant, man. We just waiting for the power and strength and all powers from on high to uh, kick in, man. You know. What do you put? <clears throat> yeah, that's right. Hey, go ahead. Up. That's a good one. I'll just read it real quick. This is Job 18 and 11. Terror shall make him afraid on every side and shall drive him into his feet. His strength shall be hunger bitten and destruction shall be ready at his side. Yeah, that's what's coming, man. All you devils, man. And it it's the spirit like when you when you see jake come together esau has a problem with that but he'll never tell you why he'll never tell you you know i just don't like so-called blacks and hispanics coming together the real reason he doesn't like it is because he knows that means his downfall hey real quick to add to you what you're saying and and araya raya kaya y'all can find y'all can go find it for me it's a statement by jayga hoover and he said back in back in the 50s or 60s sometime he said the worst thing to white, the, the worst thing <clears throat> to America and to whites, the most scariest thing you can ever, they can ever uh, endure or see is uh, black and brown un unity, man. These motherfuckers know that, man, because they know Michael 5 and 8 will kick in, all right? They know that Isaiah, when they say a, a sheep's rope, make it, they're going to they be as a sheep's rope. They know that's going to kick in, man. It's a statement by J or J. Edgar Hoover. I believe he said he, he, he said something about uh uh black unity or something like that being, it being the most scariest thing to america uh, to america or, or whites or something like that that was an actual statement <clears throat> now you can see why man when they come together yeah, we one of you brothers on the comment boy if you if you can find it you can post it man That's one that's gonna get it in the kingdom is J. Edgar Hoover. Yeah, that, that cross dresser, man. Hmm. Even yeah, you too, I'm wife. You can find it. It's a it's a, a it's a statement by J. Edgar Hoover. Hmm. Yeah, when Jake come together, Jake Jake multiply. Esau can't keep up with that. He doesn't even like his woman. He can't he can't procreate, he can't. He can't withstand Jake. He can't compete with Jake at anything. And that's just Judah. How much more are 12 tribes? I found the quote. You found it? Yeah. It says, when FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover was asked what, in his opinion, was the single greatest threat to the United States of America, he responded, Negro unity. <laughs> Oh man! So imagine Negro, so-called Negro unity, and, and 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 Latino unity, man. That's a fucking horror movie for Esau, man. He know it. Native American, Native and Native American, man. Unity, man. That's a that's a fucking that's a Stephen King flick, man. Hey, that's why that uh, that Edomite. We brought up New Jerusalem. He said New Jerusalem is a scary place. He it had is. to walk off. He had to walk off after that. Yeah. As soon as we said New Jerusalem, he had to go. He knows when all 12 tribes come together, that's that's it for him. That's a horror movie. Yeah, it's gonna be groundbreaking. I eat like to say, it's gonna be groundbreaking, literally, man. Back breaking too. Yeah. <laughs> Back breaking. Soul breaking. Soul breaking. 
and box oh. breaking, man. <laughs> no, that's it now. Yeah. God damn. Hey, the scripture hey. says, "Widow should not weep." Hey, hey, hey y'all can I? Hey, y'all can I? Huh? Instead of the children of the corn, the the, the men of the corn. <laughs> God damn. The Beckys of the corn. <laughs> yeah, they they gonna get in the kingdom. Man, that's that's all I had. Y'all have anything else? Yeah, you can you can you can share it all about. Okay. So we pray this, this Shabbat lesson was edifying to the elect. We want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem, Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.